Hi everyone, so today I'm going to be testing out these electric motor controllers. They're probably intended for electric bikes, but I've gone and bought two of them for the electric tractor project. Um, the motor that I'm putting in it has actually got two separate stators on it, so uh, I've just went and bought two massive controllers for it. So these are... 72 volts, 80 amps, 3 kilowatts, and there's going to be two of them, which should give me a good idea how well the tractor will perform. So, uh, it's probably about 10 kilowatts, roughly, will get out of the motor that we're going to put in it just now. Um, and that should hopefully give us a good idea whether the project is going to be feasible, and if that works, I'm just going to progress on to a much larger motor, probably about 60 kilowatts. Um, and I'm doing this uh, with my uncle um, as well as another guy so I'll put a link to these in the description they're nothing special really uh, I don't even think they're sine wave controllers really um, so I'll put this one over here they're both exactly the same so uh, it's called a, the company that makes it is Kunray I think Um and we've got these various connections. To get this controller to switch on, you need to connect the E-lock to battery positive. And you need to connect a throttle. These controllers are also, well, they can work in sensor lifts. But if your motor has whole sensors, you should connect them up. Because I think this affects the stability. Um, and I think once you connect up the whole sensors, you have to connect to self-study connector as well just so uh, it can learn about the motor I think that's what what it does but the interesting feature I've noticed about this controller is you can actually change the acceleration rate um, using this hard boot connection so what we'll do is we'll we'll just leave that connected to just now and we'll show you how hard it accelerates so I'll just stomp on the throttle <laughs> Right, um, I'll switch off the power and disconnect that hard boot cable. Right, so that's that disconnected. Switch on the power. Right, and stomp on the throttle again. So, as you can see, it kind of softens up the throttle response a bit, which would probably be more ideal for an electric tractor. But maybe if you're doing an electric motor motorbike with these, then you probably want to connect that because you want a really nice, quick throttle response. So without the whole sensor connectors um, connected, it seems like the motor could sometimes just jerk very slightly during startup. That's that's not always obvious though. So maybe try that again with hard boot enabled. See, sometimes it can just jerk backwards ever so slightly. So we'll try to connect up the hall sensors and see if that changes anything. Right, there we go. That's the hall sensors all plugged in. So we'll try that again. Try to throttle out. Mm, it still seems to do it. Right, so we'll try the self-study option. So yeah, when I've plugged in the self-study, it sort of spins up, switches off and spins up again and just keeps going. So uh, we'll unplug the self-study cable. So right, if you've got one of these actually in a project, you'll want to keep the wheels off the ground for this. Right, we'll see if it still does that sort of jerking motion. So the whole sensors are connected. No, just doesn't do it at all. It's much it's actually more stable with the whole sensors. But I think you can tell by the way the motor sounds that it's not a sine wave controller. I doubt it anyway. 
that doesn't because I'm pretty sure if that was a sine wave controller the motor would be pretty silent at those low speeds uh, I do have an oscilloscope somewhere that I can connect up to it just to make sure but before I connect the oscilloscope up to the phase output on the controller I'm going to connect it to the hall sensors because I've always wondered actually what the hall sensor outputs on a motor look like um, I predict it will be a sine wave so sadly this is a, a very old oscilloscope and I think the trigger level sensor on it is gone um, but I can kind of tell from that that it's not a sine wave it's actually a square wave that the hall sensors give out um, so it's just the milli settings so yeah you can see it's basically a square wave that comes out of the hall sensors yeah, I'm quite surprised at that. I thought they were sine waves. Well, unfortunately, I'm not getting much sense out of the oscilloscope. Um, so obviously, it is an AC waveform of some sort that's coming out of it, but um, I think because the trigger level sensing is broken on it, I can't actually uh, really display anything that's much use. I was trying to get some sort of wave to come up on it, but I think the PWM, unfortunately, is just totally confusing it. Thing is, we can't even seem to get the PWM frequency to show on this. Um, it must be very, very high because um, those two lines there are probably the PWM frequency. So, yeah. So that's as fast as this oscilloscope can detect. So yeah, it's probably probably up in the could be twenty up above twenty kilohertz at least. So I've sadly not been able to really decide conclusively with whether this is a sine wave controller or not. But um usually a sine wave controller wouldn't make so much noise when it's driving motor slowly under load like that. I wouldn't have thought anyway, so yeah, it's looking like these controllers are going to be pretty decent. Um, probably two of these is a bit much for the motor I'm using, but I really do want to get as much power out of it as possible for the test. So um, they should hopefully be, yeah, they should hopefully work perfectly for this. And this foot throttle is the exact throttle that's going to go in the tractor, as well as a hand-operated throttle, because tractors need those too.